48 hours before our trip to Boston, we make a pit stop in Hartford, Connecticut. We are live from the XL Center for Thursday Night Smackdown. And tonight, who punches their ticket to bad blood? It is the Pirate Princess, Kyrie Sane, one-on-one -on -one with the former champ, Raquel Rodriguez. The winner meets Roxanne Perez this Saturday at bad blood. And of course tonight, Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton will pick each other's poison. They meet inside Hell in a Cell in just 48 hours in Boston. Cody Rhodes main event against an opponent of Randy Orton's choosing. But as we found out earlier this afternoon, we already know who Cody Rhodes has chosen for the Apex Predator. It is a rivalry reignited. Two days before this man is a part of a massive six-man tag team match in Boston. He arrives here in Hartford to lock horns with the Viper. The following contest is scheduled for one song. Making his way to the ring from West Millbury, Massachusetts. Weighing in at 251 pounds. It is that label that has been placed upon him by the WWE, the greatest of all time, which is why the ring general Guther has taken issue with John Cena in recent weeks. Guther believes that is a laughable statement, believes he is in the conversation as the GOAT of this industry. Guther stands alongside Kaiser and Vinci of Imperium as they battle John Cena, Trick Williams, and the United States Champion Carmelo Hayes live this Saturday in Boston, Mass. This is no ordinary pit stop for John Cena tonight. Before he entangles that six-man tag team warfare on Saturday, he meets the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. A story as old as time as these two legends lock horns once more here on SmackDown. We are 48 hours away as Randy Orton approaches hell in a cell against the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes with the World Heavyweight Championship hanging in the balance. These two men with a checkered past dating all throughout 2024. Their issues finally come to a head. The blood boils over live at 5 p.m. Eastern time this Saturday night. Well, just a bit here on SmackDown, we're going to take a closer look at the history and what is to come this Saturday inside Devil's Playground between Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton. Cody Rhodes, as we mentioned, awaits an opponent of Randy Orton's choosing in the second half of this Pick Your Poison later tonight in the main event. But Randy Orton opening things up here in the XL Center against a very familiar foe, the franchise player in John Cena. Randy Orton has been on a tear for months on SmackDown. Went toe-to-toe -to -toe with The Rock back at SummerSlam. Turned away the almighty Bobby Lashley back at No Mercy last month. We haven't seen him since. Defeating Ilya Dragunov just a few weeks ago at the season premiere. Now running into John Cena all on his road to Hell in a Cell live on Saturday. For Randy Orton tonight, a victory is of the utmost importance. Momentum hangs in the balance for the number one contender to the world title. Orton and Cena, obviously extremely familiar with each other's game plans. As a matter of fact, these two superstars have been inside the Hell in a Cell structure not once, but twice with each other before. Know what it takes to keep down the other inside of that squared circle. What will be the result here in Hartford, Connecticut tonight? So we wait to see who Randy Orton has chosen to meet Cody Rhodes later tonight here on SmackDown. It's really no surprise that Cody selected John Cena, or shall we say, asked John Cena to take this place in the Pick Your Poison tonight. It was last Saturday at night one of Halloween Havoc in Baltimore for No Nation Gaming Channel members. And Cody Rhodes alongside John Cena picked up a tag team victory over Austin Theory and Grayson Waller of A-Town Down Under. A-Town Down Under been aligned in a sense with Randy Orton over the last few months. We really dove deep into that relationship this past Saturday at Halloween Havoc. 
After a WWE.com interview with Theory and Waller last week really got an insight as to how that developed, Orton evidently promised A-Town Down Under, help me get back the World Heavyweight Championship, help me get rid of all these enemies that were starting to stack up, such as Bobby Lashley and The Rock, and now Cody Rhodes, and I will help you two gentlemen get back the tag team titles. Evidently the deal that Orton, Theory, and Waller agreed upon. I'll tell you what, Eight Town Down Under have really helped Randy Orton fight some battles over the last few months on SmackDown. I have yet to see where they get their tag team title opportunity. Remains to be seen if Orton is going to be good on his word. Nonetheless, that is the situation there. Randy Orton now in the midst of this battle with John Cena, no theory or Waller. Here at ringside tonight, Orton going it alone against the franchise player. John Cena returned to action just a few weeks ago in Brooklyn, picking up a big victory over Imperium's Ludwig Kaiser, a match where Kaiser had called him out a week prior. Of course, after that matchup that we realized why Kaiser had gotten the attention of John Cena indirectly on the behalf of the ring general Gunther. Dove deep into it last week. Gunther with a very simple yet effective statement on X, saying that the fact that John Cena is called the franchise player of the WWE Discussed as the greatest of all time is an absolutely laughable statement. John Cena now in the crosshairs of Gunther and also in the crosshairs of Randy Orton. What a suplex to the outside. Well, Gunther and John Cena will lock horns in the midst of the six, six man, I should say, tag team matchup this Saturday night. Remains to be seen if Gunther is going to be good on his word as to proving he is better than John Cena. Of course, the situation that has developed as well between the United States champion Carmelo Hayes along with Trick Williams against Imperium. Kaiser and Vinci picking up that tag team victory over the Trick Melo gang last week here on SmackDown. Nonetheless, so much blood is going to be boiled over live this Saturday in Boston. A stacked event with so much riding on it. As for Randy Orton, tonight he just looks to get through John Cena, march right into Satan's prison, the hell in a cell, on Saturday night, and finally obtain the World Heavyweight Championship that he has been on the hunt for for well over a year here on SmackDown. A championship that eluded him time and time again in 2023. And the fact that he was unable to win back that title and a victory for Cody Rhodes on SmackDown all the way back in the month of January is really what pushed Orton over the edge and set us on this now year-long story between the Apex Predator and the American Nightmare. Randy Orton out to send a message to the world champion tonight, DDT Vintage Orton. Will that do it here at Hartford? Not just yet. Cena has been on the receiving end of that DDT time and time again throughout his career, not looking to revisit it as a result here tonight on SmackDown. Using his body as a weapon, John Cena now fighting an uphill battle. He's got to be feeling a little of a sense of urgency, if you will, after Randy Orton dropped him a few moments ago, but now it's John Cena who elevates Randy Orton and drops him on the canvas. Oh, hold on a second. The ring general... The former World Heavyweight Champion is here in the XL Center and distracting John Cena as Randy Orton looks to take advantage. Gunther trying to get into the mind of Cena before this Saturday night. RKO, no, Cena. Off the reversal. And now it's John who's looking for a signature maneuver. Oh, there's a counter by Orton that time. Saw it coming. RKO by a coiled Viper. And with a little distraction from Gunther, Orton is victorious. Well, John Cena is not going to let that get under his skin. He's going to get himself up, dust himself off, and reach focus before Saturday night. But that slight distraction costing Cena this bout against Randy Orton. Orton and Cody meet on Saturday. But right here, we want to take an in-depth look at the rivalry that has developed throughout 2024, leading us to Hell in a Cell. Two thousand twenty-three. 
a year plagued with hardships for both Randy Orton as well as Cody Rhodes. But 2024 has told the story of heartbreak and triumph, of trials and tribulations, and facing the ghost of the past. Last year, the Apex Predator came up short time and time again, trying to obtain his goal of becoming World Heavyweight Champion. As 2024 began, Orton seeks new horizons, looking to remind the world just how dangerous he can be. One ominous night on SmackDown brought out the dark intentions of the cold-blooded Viper, nearly ending the career of one Cody Rhodes, beginning a story of payback on that night. The American Nightmare took the fight into the grandest stage and toppled the man who was once his mentor. The failures of high-level competition continue to seep into the bloodstream of the Viper, forcing his hand and challenging Cody Rhodes to keep the fight going. Orton's hunt for victory and his thirst to show the world he still has what it takes took him down an even darker path, sending Rhodes home in an ambulance on more than one occasion. It was clear for both individuals it was time to move forward with their careers. Randy Orton set out to conquer more victims, all the while Cody Rhodes found himself climbing from the bottom all the way to the top of the mountain of this industry. One common goal of being the champion has reopened these old wounds. Randy Orton seeks to once again hold the championship that eluded him all last year. Cody Rhodes faces the demons of his past one more time. Their history speaks to the magnitude of this fight, bringing them to the one place that is certain to aid in ending it all. The Devil's Playground, Hell in a Cell. The structure will once again be lowered, locking these two fighters inside. The bad blood has boiled over. Months of danger and destruction come to a head. Will Cody Rhodes finally settle this score and walk out still holding his gold? Or will Randy Orton enter a familiar battleground and leave as not only the one true victor, but as the world heavyweight champion? Devil's Playground awaits, and the answer lies inside the confines of hell in a cell. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. We're back live in the XL Center at Hartford. This is Thursday Night Smackdown. And his opponent. Well, of course, the WWE Tag Team Championship will be on the line at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going down to the Bad Blood kickoff show this Saturday night. The LWO defend the gold against the team now dubbing themselves Los Garza, Angel and Birdo, the former Tag Team Champions. Those two individuals losing their gold to Rey Mysterio and the newest member of the Latino World Order, Dragon Lee, just two weeks ago at the season premiere in Brooklyn. Dragon Lee has bursted on the scene, a performance in the Cruiserweight Classic, really opening up the doors for an opportunity to join SmackDown, and now look at him, one half of the Tag Team Champions. Dragon Lee alongside Rey Mysterio have already been proven to be a cohesive unit. 
Looking to take the tag team division by storm. But coming up on Saturday night, they look to deal with a little bit of a demon of their past, similar to Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton as they meet Los Garza in their Tornado Tag Team matchup on the Bad Blood Kickoff Show. Well, that is then. This is now First Dragon Lee has got his hands full with Apollo Crews here in singles action. Dragon Lee keeping up a busy schedule as of late. Just a month ago was another member of the NXT roster of a performance in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic, defeating the LWO's Cruz Del Toro, as we mentioned, really opening up the doors for Rey Mysterio to choose Dragon Lee as a tag team partner a few weeks back. And ever since winning the tag team championships, not only has Dragon Lee become a member of the Latino World Order, he has also been awarded a SmackDown contract. Well, last Saturday at Halloween Havoc in Baltimore, incredible matchup between Dragon Lee and Andrade. Dragon Lee picking up the victory over Andrade on that night. Now back in action here on SmackDown. Bad Blood kickoff on Saturday and still a part of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. He meets Nathan Frazier in the quarterfinal round in just a few weeks' time. Dragon Lee certainly making his presence felt in each and every arena across the, across the globe. Nonetheless, the Bad Blood kickoff show for No Nation Gaming Channel members going down live at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time this Saturday night. Be sure to hit the join button down below or the link up in the cards. Do not miss your opportunity to see the exclusive kickoff to Bad Blood live from the TD Garden. Also going to gain access to Halloween Havoc Night 1, the replay from last weekend. Of course, next weekend, Halloween Havoc Night 2 in Norfolk, Virginia. Going to gain access to that as well. So much action for channel members, of course, but so much action each and every week right here on SmackDown. As Apollo Crews going to get some momentum on his side against one half of the tag team champions. Dragon Lee has got the speed and agility on his side. Apollo Crews with the size and strength. Who has got the better attributes here tonight on SmackDown? Make no mistake about it, Dragon Lee hitting that shooting star press. Apollo Crews known to institute some high offense maneuvers at times as well. Unfortunately for Cruz, Dragon Lee may not give him the breathing room to even try to attempt to do so. Lee has found some red hot momentum, whether it be on SmackDown or over in the Hammerstein Ballroom at the Cruiserweight Classic, and he is not looking to see it go up in smoke here tonight in Hartford. Wow, look at the maneuver by Lee! Apollo Cruz! Sent for an amusement park ride as this Hartford audience comes unglued. Bicycle knee to the jaw. Dragon Lee, eyes locked. Operation Dragon dead center of the ring. There is a reason Lee has taken SmackDown by storm. What a victory for one half of the tag team champions. Los Gars is gonna have their hands full in just 48 hours in Boston. Oh, hold on a second. Angel, Birdo, ambushing Lee and Mysterio from behind. The former tag team champions looking to get the last laugh before it is a Tornado Tag Rules matchup in just 48 hours. Well, celebration not to be tonight, but the show is entitled Bad Blood for a reason. Rey Mysterio's been dealing with Angel and Birdo for months. Now Dragon Lee is caught in the crossfire. Tornado Tag Team matchups live on the Bad Blood kickoff show for No Nation Gaming channel members in just 48 hours in Boston. But speaking of tag team action, we got some on hand right here, right now, for the XL Center. The Street Profits have not found themselves in the winning ways against the D'Angelo family. Can they turn it all around here tonight? In the following contest, his attack match set for one ball. On the way to the ring, at a combined weight of 492 pounds. The action gonna keep on rolling as Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford meet Tony D'Angelo and Stax up next here on SmackDown.
Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast-paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way, exclusively, each and every Wednesday, only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all-time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code, follow on TikTok, and don't miss a second of Velocity. Last Sunday afternoon in Hammerstein Ballroom, the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament continued with a first round matchup between the LWO's Joaquin Wilde and TNA wrestling legend Frankie Kazarian. These two men share a similar path, both former TNA X Division champions. But last Sunday, it was the great outing of Frankie Kazarian that punched his ticket to the next round. SmackDown's Chad Gable met another TNA standout in the Octopus, Jonathan Gresham, a professional wrestling masterclass from one bell to another. Gresham impressing everybody in Hammerstein Ballroom, but Chad Gable certainly motivated to get back on track, making sure he was going to punch his ticket to the quarterfinals. We are set to conclude the first round of the CWC this Sunday at 12 noon Eastern time as NXT's Scottish Supernova, Noam Dar, meets the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne from Thursday Night SmackDown. Also coming up this Sunday, these two men, no strangers to one another, the Irish Devil, J.D. McDonough, meets the big strong boy, Tyler Bate. Bate has promised to defend his title throughout each and any round of the tournament he competes in. The first round of the CWC concludes live this Sunday at 12 noon Eastern time. We are back inside the XL Center here in Hartford, Connecticut, and we are set for tag team action. Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford have yet to find an answer to Channing, Stax Lorenzo, and of course the main man, the Don of SmackDown, Tony D'Angelo. Maybe tonight is where they find new luck. All remains to be seen, a very interesting tag team matchup by all accounts tonight. The D'Angelo family upsetting the Street Profits in their debut last month on SmackDown. And just a few weeks ago, was, or I should say just last week, Tony D'Angelo picking up a singles victory over Montez Ford. Now it's another tag team matchup tonight. Dawkins and Ford looking to find some new momentum for themselves here on SmackDown. A new crop of talent in stacks and Tony D'Angelo may be too much for the Street Profits to handle. Like the Don of SmackDown, as he calls it. And his henchmen and stacks, all part of the family. We're going to make sure the Street Profits know who runs these streets in 2024. All remains to be seen. they got to make sure they keep getting W's inside of their ring to hold that claim. So far, it has been so good. Stacks controlling Montez Ford in the early going of this matchup. With the tag team title matchup that we just discussed a few moments ago, Going down this Saturday at Bad Blood between Los Garza and the Latino World Order. A lot of history between those two duos. You gotta believe if Angel and Birdo are unsuccessful, the line is gonna be wide open for the LWO and the tag team titles. Could one of these two teams possibly be waiting in the wind for whoever leaves Bad Blood as the WWE Tag Team Champions? All remains to be seen is Tony D'Angelo now tagged in and picking up right where he left off last Thursday here on SmackDown. And a little cheap shot to Angelo Dawkins. Well, but these men have got it done fair and square the last few weeks, but make no mistake about it. If you know your history with the D'Angelo family, these two gentlemen not afraid to get their hands dirty all about the business for their family. There's Montez Ford just trying to find a way back into this matchup off the springboard Tornado DDT. Not keeping Tony D down just yet, but had him looking up at the lights. Which is what Montez Ford clearly needs just to get the Street Profits back on the right track. Montez Ford catching Tony D'Angelo at a frustrated moment. And here's Angelo Dawkins with some fire underneath his feet. Street Profits entangling A-Town down under a couple of times over the last few months. I've seen some highs, I've seen some lows, but they are out to find their way back to number one contendership. A victory over the D'Angelo family tonight, at least even in the score between these two duos, can certainly aid them in doing so. 
Angelo Dawkins just letting a couple of fists fly. I think after that cheap shot by Tony D a few moments ago, Dawkins a little bit fired up. You can't blame him. Tony D'Angelo may be feeling a little bit rocked right now. May not have been expecting that fire out of the big AD of the Street Profits. Montez Ford now sending Tony D back into the corner as he was pinned in that singles matchup last week here on SmackDown. Not looking to see that happen again. There's a reversal by the dawn of Thursday nights. Tony D'Angelo and Stax surprising the Street Profits last month, accepting their open challenge, debuting here on SmackDown, making some waves ever since. As we talk about, momentum is always a key word here on the blue brand. Got to pick up those W's to remain relevant and gain opportunities. And that is what the D'Angelo family is looking to do here tonight. Tony D'Angelo not getting the three count that time, but was at least able to get himself back on track into this contest. Another loss for the Street Profits could be catastrophic to their trajectory here on SmackDown. Tag made to Channing Lorenzo. Stacks doing a little bit of business with Tony D. But Montez still into this matchup. Great double team maneuver. You gotta give credit where credit's due. Like their smug attitudes or not. Unfortunately for Stax and Tony D, this one's gonna roll on. Damage obviously done. Montez Ford may be surviving, but he certainly isn't thriving at the current moment. Or maybe we spoke too soon. There's a reversal that time. Now Ford sending Stax into enemy territory as this tag team matchup progresses. We saw the fire out of Angelo Dawkins a few moments ago. I don't think Stax wants none of that business. Montez Ford with his own plan in mind. Scooping a slam up on the middle buckle. Wow, what a blockbuster! The agility out of Ford. Tony D ensuring that this matchup does not see a conclusion just yet. Montez Ford finding some daylight in this matchup. Super kick knocks Channing right on his ass. From the heavens, frog splash. The Street Profits getting a much needed victory this Thursday night. A huge victory for the Street Profits. And in regards to huge victories, we're going to take you back to Velocity just yesterday afternoon, only on TikTok. The women's world champion Roxanne Perez went one-on-one -on -one with a former women's tag team champion in Zoe Stark. And there you see the prodigy starting to get frustrated. Exposed the turnbuckle. Sent Zoe Stark right to the steel. Used it to her advantage. And the women's world champion securing a victory. Now Roxanne Perez looks to ride that momentum into bad blood, but who is gonna meet her there? Will it be Kyrie Sane? Will it be Raquel Rodriguez? Who challenges for the Women's World Championship on Saturday? We find out up next here on SmackDown. After no mercy is shown and a queen is crowned, the bad blood will boil over. Coming your way, live on Saturday night, October 19th, from the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Witness the unforgiving, high octane, and high stakes action as Raw, SmackDown, and No Nation Gaming channel membership proudly present WWE Bad Blood. Who is making the trip to Boston on Saturday night to challenge the prodigy Roxanne Perez for the Women's World Championship? This eliminator has consisted with four women, but it is now down to two. Who becomes the one at the other side of the bell? The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making her way to the ring from Rio Grande Valley, Texas. Raquel Rodriguez makes the ring walk. Last Thursday night on SmackDown, she turned away Alexa Bliss in a Queen of the Ring semifinal rematch. 
Raquel Rodriguez, of course, a former one-time women's world champion, a championship reign that came to an end by hands of Roxanne Perez two months and change ago at SummerSlam. Raquel Rodriguez has yet to get back inside the squared circle with the Prodigy, has yet to get another chance to win back the gold she lost all the way back in Detroit. This Saturday could be her opportunity. But if two weeks ago at the season premiere told us anything, and that's that this woman, Kyrie Sane, will stop at nothing to ensure victory on her quest for gold. And representing the Kabuki Warriors from Yamaguchi, Japan, Kyrie Sane! A mystery spot in the eliminator was revealed to be the returning Kyrie Sane, who shocked the world two weeks ago in a victory over the LWO's Zelina Vega at the season premiere in Brooklyn. Kyrie Sane, no stranger to championship gold, a former one-time NXT Women's Champion, also a former NXT Tag Team Champion here in the WWE, a Mae Young Classic winner, Kyrie Sane knows what it takes to sit at the top of the mountain. And now she is looking to get through Raquel Rodriguez, march right in to Boston on Saturday night and find some new treasure. Kyrie Sane two weeks ago exposed the turnbuckle, similar to Roxanne Perez yesterday afternoon on Velocity. That exposed turnbuckle aiding her in victory as she knocked out Selena Vega with a spinning back fist, ensuring she would be here in the finals of the Eliminator tonight. Well, here we go, Raquel and Kyrie kicking things off in this Eliminator final. The winner will meet Roxanne Perez in just 48 hours at Bad Blood. Certainly a size differential, bit of a David vs. Goliath situation here on SmackDown. Kyrie Sane has chopped larger superstars down before and has beaten some of the best this industry has had to offer. Former champion for a reason, Raquel Rodriguez cannot be wary, or I should say should be wary, of her opponent tonight. Cannot underestimate the pirate princess Kyrie Sane. Kyrie had the surprise factor on her side two weeks ago. Does not have that in her corner tonight. Raquel, I'm sure, has done her homework on her opponent. Just because you have read the playbook does not mean you're going to be able to execute on it. Kyrie saying so far so good. You saw in the opening moments Raquel Rodriguez storming at the Pirate Princess. Kyrie immediately countered it on an arm drag. It's been Kyrie ever since. On a one-way traffic, but Raquel Rodriguez looking to turn things around here. Not looking to see Kyrie Sane dictate the pace of this Eliminator matchup. Raquel made it through three rounds of the Queen of the Ring tournament, only to fall short to Monday Night Raw's Tiffany Stratton four weeks ago in the tournament finals. Tiffany Stratton, of course, awaits Monday Night Raw's champion, whoever that may be, whether it's going to be Bianca Belair or Cora Jade, next month at Survivor Series. An opportunity that could have been Raquel's had she gotten her hand raised all the way back in Madison Square Garden. But now another opportunity on the horizons for Raquel Rodriguez, if and only if she can get through Kyrie here tonight. Sane brought into the corner. Raquel Rodriguez going for the kill early. We have seen her pick up victories with that very maneuver out of the corner before. Victory not to be had just yet. A little bit of a sense of urgency out of Raquel Rodriguez, if I say so myself. Realizing Kyrie very aggressive in the early going, trying to dictate the pace of the matchup. Raquel may be feeling she has to play catch up. Bringing this fight to the outside. Kyrie may have rolled to the outside, trying to get some R&R. &R. The lady with the initials R&R &R herself not going to allow it. Raquel Rodriguez had a pretty red-hot 2024. Really making herself one of the focal points of the SmackDown Women's Division Championship or not. Defeated Shayna Baszler, Asuka, Io Sky throughout her Women's World Championship reign. And those are just championship matches, not including non-title. Bounce here on SmackDown. Hold that thought. Spinning back fist by Kyrie. The same maneuver that knocked out Selena Vega a few weeks ago. Not going to keep down Raquel just yet. Granted, Kyrie had sent Selena right into that exposed steal, which certainly did not aid in the first lady of the LWO's defeat on that night. 
Nonetheless, Kyrie Sane finding a way to get back into this matchup. That is why Zane can be so dangerous. Speed on her side. Raquel Rodriguez has got no answer. Raquel may have beaten some of the best of them throughout this year. Maybe a former women's world champion. Kyrie Sane does not give a damn. Back on SmackDown looking for her opportunity, but she just got caught with a boot. Kyrie going for that patented elbow in the corner. However, Raquel Rodriguez off the reversal, but there's Kyrie Sane. Sneaky pinfall that time. Raquel again. Power on her side, able to get out of that pinfall scenario. And we got a fast-paced matchup, hard hitting. Both these women trying to keep each other down as soon as possible and sustain some energy for Saturday Night's Bad Blood. Only one of these women will stand across Roxanne Perez. Who gets the opportunity? To the victor goes the spoils. Nice strength shown by Kyrie Sane. Kel Rodriguez has struggled to find sustained momentum in this matchup. Kyrie Sane, the aggressor as she once again gets Raquel looking up at the lights at the XL Center. As much as Raquel might want to get back in the ring with the woman who took away her championship and stabbed her in the back back in the summer, Kyrie Sane may be the blockade. There's a sidestep that time. Whatever Kyrie was going for, gonna have to live for another day. There's a sidestep by the Pirate Princess. Raquel Rodriguez just cannot get through that window! Another spinning back fist! Raquel with no answer as Kyrie scales the ropes. Could be looking for one insane elbow drop to the heart. Dead center of the ring. X marks the spot, but there's no treasure to be found. Raquel Rodriguez still in this match. Kyrie Sane throwing her best maneuver. Unfortunately for her, Raquel proving why she is a former women's world champion. Raquel rolled to the outside, trying to create some distance. Kyrie gonna close the gap. Nobody home. No water in the pool. Crash and burn. They don't call it high risk and high reward for nothing. And that misstep by the Pirate Princess may come back to haunt her. And it may pay Raquel Rodriguez dividends here tonight on SmackDown. Muscle it up, Kyrie with a backbreaker on the outside. Raquel with significant size and strength on her side this evening. Kyrie Sane has got to feel broken in half after each and every powerful maneuver delivered by Raquel Rodriguez. Kyrie on spaghetti legs. Whatever Raquel had in mind is not to be found. Kyrie crucifix bomb. Hold on a second. Raquel Rodriguez getting sent for a loop into the pinfall. Damn near almost had this matchup won. Kyrie once again sneaking the momentum away from Raquel. Might not last long. Tahana bomb by Rodriguez. Raquel is going to bad blood. And look who's on the scene. The women's world champion, the prodigy, Roxanne Perez, staring into the eyes of her future. A SummerSlam re- Oh, wait a minute. Kyrie Sane attacking Raquel while she had her back turned. Well, Sane has certainly shown an aggressive side, win, lose over the last few weeks. Raquel looking in the eyes of the women's world champion who came out to confront her on the stage. And now Kyrie Sane is looking to send a message. Oh, back to the top. And for the second time here at Hartford, insane elbow. The match is over, but Kyrie Sane getting the last laugh. Raquel may be the winner, but she certainly doesn't look like one. After no mercy is shown and a queen is crowned, the bad blood will boil over. Coming your way, live on Saturday night, October 19th, 
from the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Witness the unforgiving, high octane, and high stakes action as Raw, SmackDown, and No Nation Gaming channel membership proudly present WWE Bad Blood. Last Thursday night on SmackDown, the war of Ilya Dragunov and Drew McIntyre continued, except it was the Celtic warrior Sheamus who was out to find his killer instinct since realigning with the Scottish warrior himself. McIntyre saying if Dragunov was to get his hands on the Scottish warrior, he had to go through Sheamus. Unfortunately for Dragunov, he was essentially fighting a two-on-one handicap match last Thursday night on SmackDown. McIntyre might have got tossed, but the damage was done. Sheamus getting the victory in the end. But earlier this week, the Mad Dragon himself, Ilya Dragunov, with a very elusive, very ominous words regarding the pain that Sheamus and Drew McIntyre continue to inflict on the Czar. Then, myself. I drink from the chalice of suffering. And so hell feels like hope. Ilya Dragunov. Tensions between Ilya Dragunov and Drew McIntyre continue to bubble up, but we look ahead to this Saturday night. We are live at 5 p.m. Eastern time for the main show, Bad Blood from the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. And of course, if you become a No Nation Gaming channel member today, you're gonna gain access to what goes down at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. It is the Bad Blood kickoff show. You saw a bit of a preview of the action earlier tonight. Tensions rising between these two tandems. It's a Tornado tag team matchup for the WWE tag team titles. Los Garza tries to get back their gold as they contest Dragon Lee and Rey Mysterio. That's going down on the Bad Blood kickoff. And then in regards to the main show, we look at Monday Night Raw for one of the most high stakes action of the night. The casket match. Braun Breaker, Karrion Cross, two men out for destruction of one another. Who's gonna get the last laugh? Who's closing the casket on this rivalry? And as we found out moments ago, the Women's World Championship to officially be decided in a SummerSlam rematch. Raquel Rodriguez has waited two months to get back in the ring with the prodigy Roxanne Perez. She has scratched and clawed her way for this opportunity. Can she get, get back the gold against the woman who took it away from her two months ago? From Monday Night Raw, the WWE Women's Championship is on the line. Bianca Belair has defeated Cora Jade in singles action in the past, in non-title action. Can she do it when it matters most? Lady Luck has been on the side of Cora. Who's gonna get the championship in their grasp on Saturday night? The World Tag Team Championship to be decided as well. The three-time champions, Damian Priest and Finn Balor of the Judgment Day, contest Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Bad blood has continued to boil between these two duos for months. It all comes to a head on Saturday. The Trick Mellow Gang has entangled Imperium, and John Cena has been brought to the mess. Guther thinks the fact that John Cena is dubbed the greatest of all time is absolutely laughable. Kaiser wants the United States Championship. Trick's out for revenge. It's a massive six-man tag team battle courtesy of SmackDown. Monday Night Raw's main event. 
sees a matchup that promises to be a professional wrestling masterclass as the Second City Saint, CM Punk, one-on-one -on -one with the phenomenal AJ Styles for the first time in a WWE ring. Styles stole away the WWE title in the triple threat at No Mercy. Punk gets Styles one-on-one -on, -one on Saturday. And then, of course, from SmackDown, in the main event, Satan's prison awaits as the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes meets the Apex Predator, Randy Orton. The tension between these two men is absolutely palpable. Blood to be promised. Destruction is on the horizon. It is Cody. It is Orton for the World Heavyweight Championship inside Hell in a Cell. But before we get to Boston, Cody Rhodes has got one more pit stop to make. Making towns, taking care of business as your world heavyweight champion. Unfortunately for Cody, the franchise John Cena's eye was taken off the ball by Guther and Orton found the utmost success at the top of the hour. Who has Orton chosen to battle Cody in tonight's main event on SmackDown? The second half of the Pick Your Poison is live. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Atlanta, Georgia. The 2024 King of the Ring winner, the man who toppled the historic reign of the ring general Guther and won the world heavyweight title back at SummerSlam in August. Cody Rhodes retaining his title over Drew McIntyre last month at No Mercy and now awaits his second defense of the big gold belt. It is a story that Cody Rhodes has been waiting since the month of May to write the final chapter to. Well, I guess we should have expecting something along these lines. From A-Town down under, Austin Theory is back into the ring with the American Nightmare here tonight. Well, we talked about earlier tonight the relationship between A-Town Down Under and Randy Orton. Austin Theory with a chance to aid Randy Orton in winning the World Heavyweight Championship this Saturday by softening up Cody Rhodes here on your Thursday night edition of SmackDown. You know, if Randy Orton leaves Hell in a Cell with the big gold belt, he better keep good at his promise of helping A-Town Down Under get back the Tag Team Championships because Theory and Waller are now fighting Cody Rhodes and other superstars multiple times over the last month. Theory and Waller battled Cody and Dragunov last month here on SmackDown. They fought Cody and Cena last Saturday at Halloween Havoc. Theory back into the ring with Cody tonight. Austin Theory throwing any live rounds he can to weaken the American Nightmare before he steps foot in the Devil's Playground. What is your Thursday night SmackDown main event? The World Heavyweight Champion Cody Rhodes better be focused. Cannot allow his mind to drift and focus on what awaits on Saturday. Hell in a Cell is a different animal. He needs to focus on that when the time comes. Cannot allow himself to look through Austin Theory tonight. These two men, no strangers to each other, when Cody Rhodes returned to the WWE back in the first half of 2023, found himself engulfed in a multiple month rivalry with Austin Theory. These two men fought in a 30 minute Iron Man match last year as well. Cody Rhodes with a victory on that night. Cody Rhodes has obviously succeeded at the highest level here on SmackDown. Theory has had himself some big time victories alongside Grayson Waller in 2024 as well. 
SmackDown Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic winners winning the tag team titles back at WrestleMania. Failed to get back on the right track ever since losing them back in June, but we'll see if Randy Orton down the line is going to help A-Town down under win championship gold once again. Another story for another time. That is not the question at hand tonight. Tonight, the task for Austin Theory is simply beat the hell out of the world heavyweight champion Cody Rhodes and sprinkle a victory on top of it. American Nightmare already down and out in the early moment to this matchup as Austin Theory comes off the top. If Austin Theory dictates the pace, it is going to be a long night for Cody Rhodes. A victory for Theory certainly creeps into the mind of the World Heavyweight Champion. Could be a confidence killer ahead of Hell in a Cell on Saturday. And maneuvers like that aren't doing Cody any good. Nothing pretty, just certainly effective. Trying to beat down Cody Rhodes limb by limb, rip his flesh apart, and leave him a weakened man, allowing Randy Orton, the Viper himself, to be coiled and ready to strike on Saturday night. Cody getting back into this matchup momentarily here. Again, has got to be feeling a little bit disappointed at what happened at the top of the hour. The man he selected to fight, Randy Orton, in the first half of this Pick Your Poison, the franchise John Cena, unfortunately, fighting an uneven battle thanks to the emergence of the ring general, Guther. Guther going to be wrestling his first matchup since losing to Cody Rhodes back at SummerSlam this Saturday in the midst of the six-man tag team match. Alongside Imperium against the Trick Mello Gang and John Cena. Cena might have come up short to Orton, Cody least looking to wrestle his matchup to the utmost success. Cody and Cena turned away, eight town down under last weekend at Halloween Havoc. There's at least some good mojo there. Cody Rhodes throwing caution in the wind, a couple high risk maneuvers. Certainly paying them dividends thus far, but Cody does not want to possibly risk injury ahead of Hell in the Cell, but there you see again, the World Heavyweight Champion throwing Tawson in the wind. Cody Rhodes has got a point to prove tonight. One last message to be sent to Randy Orton, saying I will stop at nothing to walk out of Hell in the Cell with my World Heavyweight Championship. Theory and Cody holding no punches as Cody just gets sent rid of those diamond-plated steps all Gonna benefit Austin Theory and certainly weaken Cody Rhodes. Sure, Randy Orton, wherever he is here in the XL Center, is grinning ear to ear, watching Theory throw these closed fists on one world heavyweight champion. Cody Rhodes does not want to risk injury tonight on SmackDown. That would certainly be catastrophic to his chances of leaving Hell in the Cell with his championship on Saturday. Back inside the ring. Wait a minute, Theory might have hesitated for just a second there. Pedigree by Cody. And Theory still into this matchup. Cody striking where the iron was hot. Just when Austin Theory thought he had this matchup, Cody Rhodes saw a little bit of daylight and struck with one of his best maneuvers. Goes back to the case with these two men knowing each other very well. They've been in the ring with each other so many a times in singles and tag matches. Just another travel down that path tonight. There's Cody crashing and burning off those high risk maneuvers that we talked about. Now it's Theory who's revving up the engines off a of blockbuster. Another pinfall that time, but the champion's still alive. And miraculously at that, back and forth, the momentum starts to swing here in Hartford, Connecticut, as Cody now muscles down Austin Theory. Another reversal that time. Pendulum momentum swinging back and forth. Who is going to get the upper hand as these two gentlemen jock for position here on SmackDown? It's Cody sending Theory down to the canvas with an emphatic force. The world heavyweight champion. We often sound like a broken record, but it's very simple statements. Trying to send a message to Randy Orton ahead of Hell in the Cell on Saturday. Orton sticking theory on Cody tonight. Will it benefit the Apex Predator, or will it just be another feather in the cap for the World Heavyweight Champion? 
Last few minutes, nobody has gotten some sustained offense in this matchup. Remains to be seen if anybody's going to be able to cross the finish line in a convincing fashion. Cody Rhodes looking like a mannequin on that canvas right now as Austin Theory just with a boot on his neck. You want to talk about nothing pretty but effective. Look at Austin Theory's very meticulous offense here tonight on SmackDown. Cody feeling the brunt of a lot of physical strikes by a former tag team champion and a former one-time WWE champion in Austin Theory. Cody, Cody, cut her out of nowhere. Cody saw an opportunity and he took it. Now Cody could be looking for a finish. Theory saw it coming. Elbow block. Now just trying to take Cody out of the canvas and kill any chance of a rally here at Hartford. The World Heavyweight Champion now once again creating some distance. Goes behind. Crossroads. Into the cover goes the champion. Message sent hell bound. Cody's on his way to Devil's Playground. Austin Theory giving Cody a fight, but the World Heavyweight Champion is at his absolute best, and he is laser focused on writing the final chapter in blood against Randy Orton on Saturday night. Oh, wait a minute, hold on here. Cut back to the arena. Ladies and gentlemen, Cody's calling for the hell of the cell to be lowered. Has that been up there all night? The World Heavyweight Champion has just called for Devil's Playground. It's been up in the XL Center rafters behind the curtains all night long. Cody bringing the structure to Hartford. Hell in the Cell has been in these hallowed halls before. Back in the year 2000 between Triple H and Mick Foley. It's back in the XL Center tonight as Cody Rhodes has sacrificed Austin Theory to the Wolves, the sacrificial lamb. Crossroads again. You want to talk about sending a message? Cody Rhodes, surrounded by Devil's Playground, shows no fear. Right to his number one contender, Randy Orton, telling the Viper, this is what awaits. This is your destiny, and I will define your legacy on my behalf, with your blood on my hands, live this Saturday, inside Hell in a Cell!